Hello, Jeff Zwerink here and welcome to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas to help you be more confident in the truth of Christianity. Today I'm joined by my colleague and friend, Dr. Fuzz Rana, and we're going to explore the question of whether Neanderthals were human or not. Fuzz, good to have you here today. Hey Jeff, how are you doing? I am doing well. Uh, you know, Neanderthals are some of these creatures that are just kind of fascinating. I mean, you, know, you got them in the archaeological or fossil record. They have a, a human type appearance to them. Um, and probably the most troubling set of data that has come up, or at least troubling to me, is this idea that humans and Neanderthals have interbred. I, I know you have wrestled a lot with that idea. So what are uh, some of the evidences that they didn't interbreed, what are some of the evidences they did, and kind of give us, just give us a little bit of your, the evolution of your thought on that idea. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, as you're pointing out, Jeff, today, it is the scientific consensus that humans and Neanderthals did interbreed. Now, just because an idea is a scientific consensus doesn't necessarily mean we have to em embrace it. We want to look at what the evidence says. But when uh, Hugh and I published Who Was Adam, which was our book where we presented uh, a, a biblical and scientific perspective on the question of human origins, we were of the opinion that there was that humans and Neanderthals didn't interbreed. There was no evidence at that time that they did. And um, in fact, we predicted that that evidence would actually never come. And lo and behold, when the Neanderthal genome was sequenced, uh, oh, about a decade ago now, uh, the initial results did indicate that there was evidence for interbreeding, but I didn't find that evidence necessarily overly compelling. Uh, the evidence was primarily statistical in nature, and there was other ways you could account for those statistical patterns. Uh, and also there was other evidence that indicated Neanderthals existed in very small insular populations. Uh, that the likelihood of humans and Neanderthals encountering each other seemed to me to be very low uh, for a number of, of, of factors. And so I wasn't completely convinced that interbreeding happened, uh, but there's been a number of studies recently that to me indicate that, that the, the best way to really think about the data in, in totality is that interbreeding did, did indeed take place. So kind of flesh out what changed your mind, because, you know, if you've got Neanderthals that are small populations, gone extinct, maybe before humanity arises, uh, very, you know, different genetic structures, what is it that changed your mind? Yeah, well, uh, a few things. Number one is that uh, we were, we're now able to directly detect evidence for Neanderthal DNA sequences uh, within the human genome. And so if there was indeed interbreeding, that would explain that observation. But for example... Before you move on from that, can you kind of give... That seems like a, a bold claim. How can we know that that's Neanderthal DNA and how do we detect it in the human genome? Yeah, can because... Can you explain that? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. It, the, the way you do it is because within the Neanderthal genome, there are sequences that have kind of a Neanderthalness to them, right? Uh, and, and, and so they're, they're, these are sequences that you wouldn't otherwise see uh, within the human genome. Uh, and so that's how, you know, you detect it is that there's just a, a, a distinct character to those sequences that, that is not what you would see in the human genome. And so, so it almost sounds like there has to be some distinctness between humans and Neanderthals to be even to detect the Neanderthal DNA inside the human genome. That's exactly right. That's the only reason why we're, we're even able to detect the Neanderthal DNA. Okay. That's a, a really important point. Uh, but, you know, in addition to that, you know, the estimates are that people of a Eurasian an ancestry have a, about 1% to 4% Neanderthal DNA in their genome. Mm -hmm. But that DNA from person to person isn't located in the same region in the genome. It can be located in different regions and the specific sequences are different as well. And so there have been some recent studies where people have been able to actually construct nearly 50% of the Neanderthal genome from the Neanderthal DNA sequences found uh, within human populations. So even though you and I might have 1% one, 1 or 1% to 4%, 
it's different. The sequences that we have are different Neanderthal sequences. And from person- so, so if you take the Eurasian population of people, sample their DNA, you can extract bits and segments of Neanderthal DNA or identify such that you can reconstruct almost 50% of the Neanderthal genome? Yes, just from sequencing uh, human genomes. And, and so that, that to me is pretty remarkable. And I just don't know how else you would explain that result other than there was you know, evidence for interbreeding. Uh, and, and so it, it's, it's, it's results like that, that to me, I think really tip the, the, uh, the pen or force the pendulum to swing in the direction that humans and Neanderthals interbred. Am I 100% confident that that's true? No, but I'm a, probably about 80 to 85% confident that, that there was indeed interbreeding. So this seems to have some pretty important ramifications because this isn't just a, you know, oh, a human depraved goes off and does something with a Neanderthal. For us to be able to get that evidence, that means that they had to breed and produce offspring that now becomes some, in some sense, part of the human population. Does this mean that if they're interbreeding, does that mean that Neanderthals were humans? Yeah, well, you know, people uh, oftentimes would make that point. And what they're doing is utilizing the biological species concept that says a species is a, a population that can interbreed and produce viable fertile offspring. But one of the limitations of that model for what a species is, is that we, well, we know a number of examples of organisms that indeed are distinct species that can actually hybridize. Mm. And, and so th that's how I would understand it is that humans and Neanderthals were distinct species that underwent hybridization. And there, there's some evidence that indicates that the Neanderthal human offspring was just on the cusp of being viable, just on the cusp of being fertile. Mm. Uh, and, and so they, th that suggests that they really were distinct species. But there's other differences. There's anatomical differences, particularly differences in brain structure, differences in development, differences in genetics that are consistent with humans and Neanderthals being different species. So to me, I see this as an example of hybridization, not evidence that they were the same species, that we're the same species as Neanderthals. So as a Christian, kind of this is a, a somewhat troubling result, if, if I'm honest. Um, how do we look at the, I mean, in 30 seconds, how do you as a Christian look at this and say, yeah, I still think Christianity is true and who we are in God's eyes is still the same? Yeah, well, I mean, there's uh, the long and the short of it is there's a number of ways that you could actually make sense of the theological issues that arise, you know, like did Neanderthals, you know, in human hybrids have souls and things like that there are ways that you could actually make sense of that theologically without really compromising key biblical ideas about human nature. There's actually a biblical warrant for uh, the, the, the prospects of humans and Neanderthals interbreeding. If we look at Genesis 6, we see the Nephilim seem to be the product of some kind of interbreeding event that mm -hmm. God was displeased with. So while I agree, share your discomfort with the fact that there was apparently evidence for interbreeding, it's not fatal to a biblical view of human origins. Uh, it means that maybe certain models for human origins from the biblical perspective may not be uh, valid, but it doesn't mean that the biblical view of human origins is undermined in any way. You know, Neanderthals are just fascinating creatures. The, the fossil record shows they clearly existed. The genetic evidence seems to indicate that humans and Neanderthals did interbreed. Uh, but the, the, the scientific record seems pretty clear that Neanderthals were not humans. You know, I do, do want to encourage you to go check out Fuzz's blog on this article. It's called Answering Scientific Questions on Neanderthal Human Interbreeding. And we'll give you some great resources so that you can understand this complex, sensitive, and even a little bit controversial topic in a way that you can go out and confidently engage those who think Christianity is wrong and be able to show that Christianity is a robust worldview that handles all the scientific data that's out there. Go check out his blog and equip yourself today.